In a previous video, I took a look at this fairly expensive shite power bank and that got me thinking. I'll be going over the parts I used, how I sort of build it, and if I'm able to charge and game on my Asus ROG Strix gaming laptop. This video took months to make so I would love it if you could smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Alright, enough talking, let's go! First I would like to start with a big warning, batteries can be dangerous and like I am demonstrating here it can burn your skin or worse catch on fire so attempt this at your own risk. Alright these are the parts you'll need, lots of 6 square millimeter wire, two 30 millimeter fans, a power meter, small step down converter, a DC to DC USB charger, a huge 300 watt DC to DC step down converter with CC and CV voltage controls, a few of these super handy wahoos to connect all your cabling together, a 3D printed holder, a few XT60 connectors, two 24 volt relays, a giant 24 volt 21 18650 cells battery pack with the BMS, a 3D designed carriage that holds all the components and the matching bottom and top part. I will be including these designs in the description below. The back part of the carriage is where the battery will live. The black bottom part has a matching rail system where the carriage can slide into. As you can see there is a bit too much room for the batteries to be secure. So to fix this I glued some pins onto the battery and this way they'll stay in their place without shifting around too much. In order to be able to charge and game on my laptop, I will have to match this 19.5 volt and 9.2 amp rating on the 300 watt step down converter. This is easily achieved by turning on the CV dial to adjust the constant voltage and the CC dial for the constant current. Now we can start with gluing in the main power cable to the carriage with a hot glue gun. Put the fans in a push configuration and start looking at cable management. So after all of this, I made a huge mistake. By gluing in the first holder, I didn't notice that there is no way to get access to the bottom screw hole. Oh well, three should be enough anyway. So let's start wiring up the heart of the power bank. With some 3D printed spacers, I can start securing it at the carriage with a few bolts. And as you can see, I learned from my mistakes by using double sided tape instead of glue. Jumping forward a bit I can start with testing the general ID and it looks promising. This laptop is running full boost but why do I want to game with this power bank? Asus designed it so it only reaches full boost when connected to a charger. So gaming is pretty useless without the charger, hence this power bank. It keeps me mobile and now I can game wherever I want, but more on that later. So I decided to ditch the two 12 volt fans with the step down converter and use 24 volt fans instead as I needed the space to place a second relay. The fans are connected onto the power supply so they will only work when you hit the switch. Then we want to glue in the DC to DC USB charger so we can charge a phone or my upcoming laptop cooling pad. I also covered the relay connections to prevent accidental shorts cause I've been there. Now we got all that done, we can start with the last details. Securing the cables, soldering on some sliding connectors and use heat shrink to prevent shorts. Let's connect the button, close the case and push in the power meter. Et voila, it's all finished for testing. So we got this switch that controls two relays. One relay is to switch from direct battery power to the adjustable power supply. The second relay is to isolate the power supply from the outgoing XT60 connector. So if I connect my charger to the power bank, there will be no power going to the output of the adjustable power supply. 
As you can see, the fans are connected to the output of the power supply, and the DC to DC USB charger is connected straight to the battery pack. In order to measure the power consumption, we need to put a power meter in series of the battery. So I made three connection points to easily remove the power meter if I need to open the power bank. The main black wire of the power meter is the common ground connected with the black wahoo. The two smaller wires in red and orange are connected to the red wahoo, which is directly feeding from the battery. The main red wire is connected to the white wahoo. This wahoo is the ground where all the grounds like the power supply and your USB charger are connected. And if you have connected this all correctly, you should see the power usage and capacity after discharge of your battery. With the multimeter we can check on the pins if the button switches from the power supply to straight from the battery. And yep, it seems to work great. Just soldering wires to some connectors can be dangerous and it's a bit ugly. So I ordered some parts to help me with the aesthetics. In this box is something that also can be found as a Chinese finger trap. But for most of the custom PC guys, you can Google these as braided sleeves. Braided sleeves are also used to resleeve PSU cables and high flow has plenty of them. These sleeves can accommodate for a variation of wire sizes, but it also works to sleeve two cables. Let's start with soldering the wires to a barrel plug and isolate them with some heat shrink. Starting with the sleeving is easy, but after a few centimeters you need to have a technique. Push the sleeve together and grab the wires underneath. After that you can pull on the sleeve and you move the wire ever so slightly. Repeat these steps and you should have something that looks like this. To secure the braided wire you can use some heat shrink and a lot of heat. The braided wire underneath will start to melt ever so slightly. To secure the other side I use some super glue to keep it from creeping up. To have a bit of strain relief I am using a new heat shrink that together with the bottom of the barrel plug gives a nice sleek look. For the side of the XT60 connector I printed a TPU sleeve that also acts as a strain relief. First, let's solder the connector in its place, slide the sleeve over it, and that's a finished custom cable that fits the build perfectly. Time to talk numbers, so I did a few tests. First we need to flip the switch, before plugging it in or sparks and some smoke will bring your wallet to tears. The first test was with no battery left and the laptop on idle with some chrome tabs open. The power bank is delivering around 70 watts charging and around 50 fully charged. And it finished at a whopping 160 watt hours total power. Then we got gaming. I used Hitman on a balanced power setting and with a power consumption of 100 watts you should be able to game for more than 1 hour on 120 FPS. For longer gaming you could decrease the FPS to around 60. After this test we have the same power delivery as an idle of 150 watt hour but at 100 watts there was no real change in lifetime this will conclude the video the power bank is a powerful tool if you want the performance on the go without the hassle of a power plug so thank you for watching i hope you like my first build and i can't wait to see you in the next one <laughs>